feel this. And welcome to the second take of episode five. I feel like five. it's a glitch in the matrix. Oh my god, what happened? No, but so. we just did this. We just went on like a five minute tangent and we weren't recording. Yeah, so, so deja vu. We'll, we'll throw in a glitch little in laugh the matrix. track for that one. All right, sorry kids. Welcome to episode five of Grizzled Veterans, where we might be a little it's more drunk so awkward than normal. Now doing it. Okay, and we're back yeah. after a hiatus. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to feel like we got to repeat yeah. everything we just said. It's been a month. Yeah. It's been a month. Are we recording now? Are you yeah, sure? we are definitely re- recording now. Okay. <laughs> a month. Grizzle Veterans. And I remember before when we weren't recording, you had a new tagline for our podcast. Oh, right. So I have to go over that again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go. All right. So welcome to Grizzled Veterans, your working class podcast out of Southern Ontario, which is in Canada, by the way. Uh, and my contention was... That it should just be Canada because Americans are stupid yeah. and they have no idea where Canada is. Yeah. Hate, hate, <laughs> hate. No, I'm just joking. I love you, America. I have wearing my underwear American flag. Uh, there you go. Okay. They got a hole in them, but anyway. <laughs> we rock. So we are the working class podcast, but then I said, I don't work. Yeah, you don't work because you're... I'm just joking. Yeah. I do work. Hardly. And I, and I, and I punch the clock. Oh, it's I, a trust fund. Well, oh, for for all you that need to know, I've been up since five o'clock this morning on four hours sleep, and I've worked a nine hour day. So no one cares. Yeah, no one cares. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but last time we were recording, we started to talk about E three. This time, I'm going to digress to make this new before we not yeah back into the thing. Right. I want to talk about last time. I think our best podcast was the one we started with movies. So let's talk about uh, a movie we both seen recently. It was Prometheus. Yep. Oh, it was cool. Not I, video games, but it was good. <laughs> Visually, one of the best movies I've ever seen. I would have to agree with you. We went and ended up seeing it in 3D. I, I didn't. Had, I I'm off the 3D train. Well, here's the thing. So is Sony. In terms of tie into the E3, so is Sony. Yeah. Um, well, um, my buddy Ty, your buddy Ty, yeah. um, told me that it had been filmed with the 3D cameras. And so I was like, oh, all right. Then maybe it's going to I heard be- it wasn't. It was. Was it? Trust me. But I heard it didn't work well. Trust me. Um, again, it's very subtle. Yeah. I didn't feel like well, that's I was the way wa- it should be. I didn't feel like I was watching a 3D movie. In fact, I forgot I was watching a 3D movie. Well, that's the way it should be, right? But it was my eyes didn't start to water at all, which usually happens when I'm watching 3D movies. Um, I would like I would basically liken it to um, Avatar in the sense that uh, the 3D was there but not mm. distracting. So, what'd you think of it? I enjoyed the film. Okay. I think overall, it's a... And you're an old uh, Alien Aliens fan. I, I've been loving the Alien movies for ages now. Yeah. In fact, I just finished rewatching the first two. Aliens. The aliens is, is the best movie in the it's series. It's excellent. It builds... So that, now, there's there's a lot of uh, lines, actually, that harken back to the old movies. They, the yeah. one, we are leaving! Yeah. You know when uh, Rick's says that yep um, I think Hicks was his name Hicks. Rex. Hicks. Hicks sorry <laughs> um, the the Latino um, girl who is Diesel remember she wields yep. the gun the huge yep. gun and, and they were just blasting when they weren't supposed to bring the guns and, they just, and that's when he grabs the one got sprayed with, with acid so, ah, we are, that's a line directly from Aliens so yep. well they're doing with Colonial Marines too they're stealing yeah. all kinds of stuff which I think is awesome yeah. uh, I mean I don't want to go into spoilers and shit but Visually, the movie blew me away. I thought it was excellent. Yeah. Um, I've watched. Now, you told me about a thing that I didn't watch. This, yeah, this theory about uh, it's, it has very religious undertones. Oh, um, okay. Ridley Scott verbatim has said in interviews that's what. I mean, the white people. I don't think this is a spoiler at all. They're engineers and gardeners yeah. of DNA and expanding life, and it's up to you to figure the que- the movie leaves so, open so many questions well, that so many people hated it because of that. They thought it was so, too open ended. Mm. It has a very bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Really? Yeah. Over the three guys. What I've read, I went with two buddies that are both very into this mm-hmm. series, and we all walked out of the theater satisfied. Cool. Uh, I mean, I and, and you the, know me. I I'm pre- I hate things. Mass yeah. Effect. 
three uh. when, when, <laughs> with the with the prior knowledge. But I'm I'm able to deviate my own. I didn't mind Prometheus. Um, because there, it's going somewhere and there will be more. Yeah. It, and it I've read more about it. it. You could see that there was more meaning in the movie that was... Uh, it was Lots of subtle things. stuff. Subtle things. Uh, I don't know. I'll post with the blog uh, an inter- interview or an, uh, an idea. It reminds me of the indoctrin- indoctrination theory from Mass Effect 3 because it is. It fills in the blanks and gives you an idea of what was intended for the movie and where it's going. But is going. this only somebody's interpretation? Yes and no, but I would say no, because Ridley Scott has said a lot of different things in terms of the religious undertones and and the intentions made from certain things. Right. But it's an Aliens movie. I don't give a fuck. It looked good. It was fun and very cool. I'm I'm anxious to see where it goes. So you'd give it a thumbs up? I would give it a thumbs up, but not to the average viewer. You got to... It's a thinking movie. Yeah. um, And it's a movie that you should have prior interest. Very smart film. You have to have prior interest yeah. in Alien and Aliens. So, I'm not saying you you do, to enjoy it on its own merit, but some of the stuff just won't make sense. Right. It'll be lost on So, Grizzled Veterans gives Pronesius two thumbs up. Double thumbs up and a middle finger, yo. <laughs> That's it. Nice. Okay. You, um, carry. I need you to vamp for a bit. All right. And uh, just leave us into E3 because I have to get another beer. Grab two, two beers. He's Four. grabbing two beers. Four. Uh, since he's leaving the room, I'm going to talk about the new Smashing Pumpkins record. Yeah, do it. Because it's really awesome. Anybody out there who's uh, in need of a good rocking album, had any previous love of the Smashing Pumpkins, check out this album. It's really good. Um, it's very well produced. Pumpkin smash, pumpkin smash, pumpkin smash. Yes, pumpkin yes. Smash. Um, yeah, it's just... Billy may be the only one left, but it still sm- sounds like the pumpkin. I like the Asian lady boy. The new bass player is no, but well, the old guy. Oh, James Eha. Yeah, yeah, Lady uh, Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but he look. <laughs> oh my god, Asian Lady that is, Boy. That is so far from where I was going. <laughs> the new bass player, she is just smoking. Oh yeah, I was seen. I I guess Billy must have a thing for female bass players. Must. But they're I don't know. They're talented. I mean, Eha was his new group. Sick. Like well, and that's the thing. Like. J- Billy's the only one left now, yeah. right? So he even got rid of Jimmy, which is unfortunate. We're both old Smashing Pumpkins fans. And but, unfortunately, for new people in terms of music, I think it might be lost on him. But. Mm-hmm. Well, the, he surrounded himself with new young musicians mm-hmm. who have the energy to keep up with him. <laughs> cool. But I, I, the last record, Zeitgeist, to me, I thought a lot of the soul of uh, and the, the essence of what Smashing Pumpkins was was lost, other than a couple songs. Mm-hmm. Um, Never Lost was one of the ones I felt had the old Smashing Pumpkins okay, yeah. flair. They actually, uh, I've got a, a, a live show I just downloaded. There, oh, okay. So I'll show you that. Never right. But uh, the new record, by all accounts, I only heard snippets on uh, 102.1 here, yeah. but it seemed like an old Smashing Pumpkins. It's, it's good. It's got a nice variety to it. Music. It rocks hard. It's got some quieter stuff on it, mm-hmm. too. It's a good Smashing Pumpkins. Like, record. a lot of today's indie music takes tones from what Smashing Pumpkins did well, early. I'm going to... I'm gonna, Go to another band that has an S and a P in their names mm-hmm. because we actually have varying. Mm. Go because uh, I have some. Uh, I have some crow to eat. Silver Sun. Silver Sun pickups. Yeah. Um, and now I'm. A, I've always been a huge fan. I've been to the I've concert like three first, times. I, I've liked them since the first album. Yeah. I've. Lo- I'd love to see them live. They're great. Um, um, there's only three of them. So well, there's four now. Four. Sorry, they got a second guitarist. That's right. They need a second guitarist. Yeah. Because but at in the first there was only three. In the album credits, there's only one guitarist, Brian. So they must take a touring. Brian's the lead singer. Yeah, yeah, so they must take a touring guitarist. Yeah, with yeah, them. yeah. Um, and by the way, if you guys have never heard of these people, these these bands, look them up. You're missing out on some fantastic. Yeah, music. we don't just play games. We also love music. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the new Silver Sun pickups album is I I love it. I think it's fantastic. You say it's I had some initial problems. I, the second album to me is excellent. I love the second album too. Excellent, uh, and I understand your your thing was it's called evolution of music, and I I respect your musical taste. I mm-hmm. really do because you have thousands and thousands and thousands of songs of varying genres. Go, I know where you're coming from. A lot of people I dismiss because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But anyway, I, at first it didn't grab me, but there's been a couple songs on the whole. The album is not my favorite. It doesn't match the second one to me. Yeah. Uh, but there are a few songs that have grown on me since. But there wasn't... The second album, um, uh, The Royal We, for instance, was a song that grabbed me right away. Uh, the various other ones. There was at least five songs off the second album that I don't think there's a song away. on the new album that didn't catch me. See, and I'm the opposite. Yeah. I, there's only two or three. 
Because um, you mentioned track three, which is um, Mary, Bloody Mary. No, that's four. Bloody Mary was their single. Number three is, uh, it starts slower. It's not Bloody Mary, though. Wow, well, all right. Yeah. I like track six. That's my favorite. Six is a little harder, isn't it? Yeah, that's the yeah, one. And I like it, too. I love yeah. to sing and play along. That's yeah. the, the chorus in there. Yeah. Anyway. New Temper Trap's good, too. You should check them out. Anyway, all right. Maybe we should get back to the yeses of what Griddle Veteran is. Video games. Video games. All right. So, I'm telling you right now, I'm here to rip E3 a new one. I'm gonna rip my shirt off. <laughs> no, I'm not. All right. Okay. E3. Yeah, we haven't recorded for a month, so we gotta talk about E3. I know we're a little late to the party, so to speak. Yep. But it is what it is. Let's talk. What do you think about E3? I thought it was the worst one I've ever seen. And if we sound like they're talking fast because we already done this. <laughs> and why do you think E3 was bad? Um, well, honestly, because it wasn't about games this year. And I think a lot of people thought that Nintendo just... They dropped the bomb, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, as I said previously when we were recording, uh, but it wasn't recorded, the target audience for E3 seems to have changed. Yes, yes and no. Um, um, mobile games are more prevalent than ever. Obviously, casual gaming has become a, a very dominant force in our hobby. Yeah. Well, they like to think it is. Uh, and, and if Wii U is, but are those casuals going to stay is my question. Um, is the, the, I'll get to that in the, the Nintendo thing, and I've touched on it in our pre-E3 uh, podcast, but go ahead. Um, well, I mean, I think what we want to basically do is kind of just touch on the highlights and stuff, right? But sure. I mean, as far as the press conferences go, I mean, a lot of people seem to say that Ubisoft won overall as far as what they had to show and the... And I would agree. I would too. I mean, it was... I thought they were excellent. Their games were excellent. <clears throat> they had about the only biggest, the big surprise of the show, which is Wash Dogs, which is phenomenal cool but I do have something I, I I'm gonna say about that game though. okay cool we'll leave it for a bit okay um the the games they showed were great and I thought overall the pre press conference was really cool but I still think that like their dynamic as far as the host and the co-host went oh it's was, brutal it was really but what's her name uh the the black girl yeah she's good yeah I like her she's pretty cool but the just get rid of the the guy, yeah. the nerdy guy. Get, he sucks. Yeah. And he, he, no one found him funny, no. charming, or appealing. Get rid of him. Yeah. He reminds me of Adrenaline Boy from last year, who was the <laughs> biggest... <laughs> yeah, that guy was a fucking retard. Caffeine like, guy. Caffeine whatever. boy, man, or whatever. And he's just pissed and sweat everywhere. Yeah. Like, do you not test these guys before you put them on stage in front of thousands what? and millions at home? You know, Ubi being the European developer. They always seem to want to, like, inject comedy and tons of it in I their must thing. must just be that European outlook yeah. towards what they're doing, and that's like German snuff film cool shit. I don't in know. its own way, but what? <laughs> it's funny because they've had some of the most embarrassing moments in the last couple oh, of countries, yeah. and yet they seem to have had the best conference overall. Well, it, it just goes shit. deep down. It is about the games. Yeah. Well, and that's why EA's press conference was sure. what it was, which they haven't changed their formula at all. It was basically the same press conference as last year. I have to admit, I missed e EA's, but well, I don't know. It's just they, sports games. They did the yet, same thing they did last year. They come out and... Bring a couple uh, athletes on to test their games. Well, Riccatello comes out and he's like, we're going to just show you 10 games. And they did. Okay. Well, that's good. And uh, But again, you're right. Like, four or five of them are sports games. And... I, but that's their big sellers, though. It may not fine. be you, but that's games. Yeah, that's fine. And EA has always done that, and yeah. I, I can I respect that. But you know, like Dead Space Three, they showed look I, good. I like Dead Space. I have to admit, I've never finished either of them because I'm a bit of a pussy bitch. <laughs> I admit, like I'm a big strong guy so or whatever. You get scared of Dead Space? Oh yeah, oh. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. I, 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 and they're not my forte because I just get all into it I'm like what the fuck's around the corner I don't want to see what's around the corner power off I'll just yeah and well, I, that's cool I, I but, think that's really cool and I think that it, that's an attestment to what the games are and that's exactly it my only fear and, and this is something that I've you know been hearing from other sources too is that it's a little soon for Dead Space 3 I mean it's been two years but they could have waited good a little studios bit now are, are churning out um, sequels why not in do, a two to two and a half year span. But why not do Naughty something dog. else? Yeah, but because that leads into other things, studios have to make money. And what we have seen in between of uh, big, huge games with Kingdoms of Amalur closing, 
Uh, and but now radical still games. Going on with them. Yeah, there's more to that story, which is beyond the scope of this podcast. Oh no, I don't we're, we're not going to get into that. Bottom line is they closed because he didn't sell enough. It's difficult. But did not and they Epic sold almost two million, two million games. But didn't Epic not step in? Uh, supposedly, but uh, yeah, and they're hiring people and, and trying to think, but they'll never be able to make another Amalur game because the property's owned by other people. That's really yeah, sad that's because they're sad. working on a sequel. But now Radical Games just closed. Who made Prototype Two? And Prototype Two, I don't think didn't sell horrible. But here's that's the landscape of today's gaming business. You, the amount of time and effort an employee you have to have is huge. Turning a profit is very difficult. Making these games is very difficult. Well, what's check the, what's interesting about that is like you're saying, you know, yeah, they sold like two million copies of Amalur. Well, and then but the the provident the the mayor of Rhode Island or whatever who they went into bed with in terms of money for big huge games and Kings of Amalur said, I guess the, the, the scope was five million games. Five million would have been able to turn profit. No games sell five million these days. Like other than the upper upper echelon. Well, yeah, unless you're Call of Duty or yes. Halo yes. or like. No one does that. Like, how, how can you be so stupid in terms of business to set that as your bar? Well, that's ridiculous. And here's the other side of it. Dragon's Dogma has apparently sold over one million over copies. Million. And which has prompted Capcom to release a statement saying, we're going to make We're going to make a sequel. And, and I, I'm glad because a lot of people shit all over Dragon's Dogma and didn't deserve it. Yeah. It's not... I bought it. And I, I have to admit, I haven't played it very much because... I got into 13-2, which yeah. we both platinum, by the way. Which I think Donovan's cool. first platinum. Everyone give it a round of applause. Boop, High five. Boop, boop. Round of applause. Yeah. Donovan's first platinum. I feel pretty good about he it. He has achievements and shit, but those don't count. I have almost 30,000 points in achievements, man. Yeah, so. yeah, I don't know what that means. I don't even know what that really is. Oh, cool. But yeah, it's first <laughs> platinum, but we both did it. So I'm going to play it, but I'm going to get to Dragon's Dogma soon. But the game's beautiful. It, it's a Japanese take on a Western RPG. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Big I'm monsters, gonna, big kills. People love it. I'm kind of hoping that they release a, like, a limited edition or whatever version with all the DLC included. I don't think the DLC's worth very much, to be honest. I I know Capcom's... We're getting way off E3 right now, but Capcom recently has changed their whole idea, and they've admitted their mistakes with on this DLC, something we've we've talked about oh. very many times. Oh, for sure. Um, but they've admitted that this is a bit bad business strategy. Not with the help of fans, of yeah, course. Yes, of course. Because there's been such an outcry in what they've done. Uh, Dragon's on what they said would be one of the last games to have this okay. for them. All right. So from here forward, they're going to change their business strategy or whatever fine whatever their synergy I hate all this business <laughs> so stupid all right. well you know that's cool we, we t actually I wanted to talk a little bit about Capcom anyway because I felt like the only thing they showed Seth at E3 I thought is so sad let's all uh, let's have Monos on for Seth Killian uh, a man who brought us Street Fighter 4 was oh. of the community did Yoshinori by the people too? for the people yeah Yoshinoro Ono is on a sick leave but, he's, uh, but supposedly Capcom worked him to the bone. That he's was on the base. He said it. He'll be back, but you who think knows he'll when. stay? Yeah. Because wouldn't it be cool if some of these guys that left Capcom formed a super studio? Yeah, but they can't take the properties with them, and yeah. Street Fighter's are replaceable. Well, they can't. Yeah, but what if what if Yoshi actually created a new fighter? Be cool. Be cool. But I mean, you got to hire studios for that and yeah. game mechanics, whatever. But what do you want to say about Capcom? I just felt like where were they aside from our Resident Evil Six? Capcom has a lot of good games. Like Resident Evil Six, shown which I don't think they they don't have their own press conference. Obviously, no. But, but I um, expected to see some other. I bet games. you they're on the floor a lot. Where's the DLC like DLG games? You know who? Oh, games available for download only. Oh, 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 have they even announced anything new for like Xbox Live or PSN or anything like that for? They're a long concentrating time? their big IPs, man. Like. Uh, I don't know what to say. Like, and Dragon's Dogma, it just came out. Yeah. It's a big seller for them. They got other stuff on the pipeline. I just thought there would have been... Resident Evil 6 is what they're concentrating on. Obviously, though. obviously. Like, for them, that's, that's got to be a few million for them. Yeah, that's less than 100 days away. It's crazy. <laughs> and I'm actually... A lot of people shit on it on the showing. I don't know why the Xbox press conference showed it, but whatever. And it was all cinematic. But the game looks good. Yeah. It looks very good. Yeah. And I, it's a game I hope you get for PS3, because I'd like to play it with you. <sighs> I, it's going to be hard because I know that Ty's going to want to play it with me. Ty is a kid. He ain't playing shit. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. You got to play the game with me. Okay. I don't have kids. I have a dog. He sits there and licks my feet. And your balls. And my balls. <laughs> what? Um, Square was actually the other company that I thought had a very light show. Light showing. They weren't even there. Like, they didn't show anything. All they did Fuck was, Square right no, now. They showed you know the tech I mean? demo. 
okay, awesome. It's a demo. Like, it, what it, do you it, want me to say? Well, it was a pretty Is it impressive? Yes. But you know what? Realism to me isn't fun. Show me a game, yeah. then I'll get behind you. Was it impressive? Absolutely. But Well, I got thinking about it, and I was like, do you think they'll ever make another Final Fantasy game that's not like a mobile device version? Yeah, that fuck, has I a, don't know. That that they has, will? That has a traditional turn-based I'll tell you battle this. system. You want to talk about projections? If Final Fantasy XV bombs, there's a high chance we'll never see like a Final Fantasy XVI for, high con- for well, consoles. I, I know people think I'm crazy, but the undertaking and the expenditure... For these games, yeah, is is massive, yeah. and uh, I don't know. They've they've crapped all over this Final Fantasy license. Breaks my heart, but anyway. Well, they just released Sorry. a statement saying, you know, like the Final Fantasy of the future has to surpass. Well, I say in order to get a Final Fantasy remake, they got to surpass. So basically, the guy has said that the Final Fantasy remake or renditions that they've been putting out are garbage. They're they're saying they're garbage. They're not good enough. He's saying that. They're admitting it. Yeah, they're, that they're admitting not that they're not good. good enough. They're not good enough. For the for the title of Final Fantasy. That's right. And I'm glad someone's saying it. I don't, I don't, 12 was a good game. I really 12. 12 was a game that was a generation too early. Maybe, but I... No, it was, because the scope, the scope of the game is magnificent. Yeah. The cities, everything. But they were almost too big and too empty. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the original concept for 12, I think we touched on this before, but... We're getting way off, but the original concept for 12 called for a much more mature game. Mm. Vaughn and Pinello were never in the fucking game. They were not characters in the game, and that's why the original guy left. Mm. I can't even remember his name, but his his main character was supposed to be Bosch, the Weathered Knight. Okay. Is it Bosch? Bosch, yeah. 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 Who's the pirate? Uh, uh, oh, shit. Um, it, Ash, Ash is the female. The female, queen. the bunny... No, no. Oh no, the the girl. Um, Fran is the bunny. Fran is the bunny, and um, but he, I think it's another B. Could it be another B? Anyway, he's really popular. He's he went super into tactics cool. advance, and okay, yeah. I think he, he was in the remake for the War of the Lions Final Fantasy oh, Tactics really? for PSP. Yeah, okay. he's a recruitable character. Very cool. Nice. But uh, there, Vaughn and Pinello, which to me were my biggest complaints with Twelve. My biggest p- complaints were those two characters. They okay. killed me. Other than that. The combat system was right up my alley at the time because I played the shit out of Final Fantasy XI. Yeah, made about five grand off the game too. Nice. If you wanna, if you wanna know how, PM me. Yeah, but yeah, I played. The gambit system was awesome. The battle system was great. It's just to me, it was a game that was a generation too early. I've gone back and played a bit of it. It's excellent, and uh, it's excellent. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, let's go on. Yeah, fun. But versus thirteen, nowhere to be shown. Nowhere. Yeah. Like where? Are, where's the game? Six years. I know. What we gotta wait for Tokyo Game Show now, if that. But no. what are they gonna show? Another demo and no release date. I was Give us really, a release date. Really disappointed that they didn't show. All right, let's let's game. start with the conferences. I'm getting pissed off. Um, <laughs> we're gonna talk about Watch Dogs a little bit from the. Ubi. So you want to start with Ubi? Okay. Um, we we kind of talked about how Ubi. Watch Dogs was the big surprise of the show. If you haven't seen the trailer, it's magnificent. Go watch it. But it's obviously not running on today's console. No. Um, but they have announced that it's coming out for today's consoles. They haven't or have? They have. I know. They said yeah, it's coming but for that's people. obviously a PC uh, high-end well, sure. PC. Well, sure. That's fine. Yeah. I have an interesting question about this game. Okay, go. How much in personal information does this game want from me? I don't know. This, I know. It shows you right curious, on the thing. Curious right? questions that I have. Because as far as I'm, I know, you're going to be able to use your mobile device in conjunction with this game. Oh, I don't know anything about that. I'm pretty sure they're going with that. Really? You know, was that a guess, or did you hear something? No, I'm pretty sure that uh, this game is going to incorporate mobile device technology into it. You don't. Necessarily well, I'll be something I won't use, but <clears throat> cool. I what uh, my I just read an interesting little comment, and it got me thinking. If this game say wants personal information from me, it, like, how far are they going to go? With it, I mean, I don't know if that's something I'd be interested in doing as a gamer. Well, I don't know. I guess you have control of it, sure. But I know what you're talking about because right at the end of the demo, which flashes up to a, a scale of the map and it shows another player. So obviously, you'll have a mul- multiplayer aspect to yeah. it. It showed like Don Minosiak, da da da, from so and so at certain p- point of the map. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to incorporate it. Quite frankly, I don't care until I hear more. Well, we Bottom line, really to know me, that much I thought it. the game looked phenomenal. I was blown away by. It. It was actually a surprise because everything's leaked yeah. these days. It looked awesome. Well, that's one of the biggest problems with E3 now. Is its thunder gets yeah pulled because I know. 
We're constantly being Yeah, fed. but even still, there was no attempts of surprises. Yeah. Sony never had any attempts for surprise. Yeah. It was just games we already knew about. Yeah. yeah. Other than Beyond. Yeah. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so Ubisoft, Assassin's Creed 3, is a, it's a series you're not into, but what'd you think? I Honestly, this game looks really good. It looks really good. It does look really good. Although I'm getting... I get the same thing happens to me every time a game gets too much attention. It's getting a ton of attention. And yeah. it basically cleaned up on Game Trailer's E3 awards. Did it? Yeah. And I, I didn't know that, because overall, I, I mean, everyone's got their own awards, right? Sure. But, um... I, the I guess there's a consensus of what the overlying awards were. I know The Last of Us won many of those. Oh, I'm, and yeah, and I know you know uh, Castlevania, Mirror of Fate got you know game for board. portable games, yeah, yeah, for stuff like that. And I'm I would have been pissed if it didn't. Not just because I'm just I'm pissed that's coming out for 3ds only, but well, we got to yeah, that too. Yeah. I, but I, I would have been pretty pissed if it hadn't got won it. Not just because I'm a fan, but because it deserves it full right. Um, Assassin's Creed Three. But yeah, Assassin's Creed. The, the game looks good. It's the first Assassin's Creed game that actually has me thinking I might want to... I played and finished them all. Yeah. Um, it looks good. I, there's nothing else I can I just, say about I just, it. You know, when Game of the Show, it won PS3 game, it won Xbox game. Sure, I don't think it won PS3. Last of Us. Well, I'm won. just saying on uh, on game trailers, that's yeah. what won. And, and, and it just felt like it was like, okay, fine, we know this game's yeah, good, it's gonna be good. But you know what? you recognize something else as well? The, the story's not very good, so until we see... The gameplay should match it from what I've seen, but we'll see. It looks good. I, I will buy it and I will play it, yeah. period. Ubisoft had a very, very strong show. Yeah. So let's go on to... Uh, should we go on to the majors now? Like the I, big let, three? Let's get... Because I want to do this quick. Let's start with Microsoft. Um, horrible. <laughs> horrible. There, I, as a non-micro... Here, I'll, I'll play the devil's advocate because I'm, I'm not an Xbox guy at all. But for the first 10 minutes, they had me. Halo they had me. Halo looks I good. don't like Halo, okay? Yep. But I was interested. Yep. I was interested in Splinter Cell. Hell, I was interested in Gears of War. They're throwing it together because they got no games. Yep. They called up Cliffy B, and they knew that the conference was going to be shit. So they said, listen, we need you to take the same engine from Gears of War 3 and make us a new game. We'll pay you fucking millions. That's what they did. They didn't show shit. They just showed a screen that they're making. Well, they it. showed a cinematic trailer that was like oh, something like that yeah less than a minute long they had me like the first 10 minutes of Microsoft's conference was very strong yep as soon as they switched from gaming to entertainment that's when although I will admit and I don't like to but the new smart glass technology looks cool is not just cool it, it, it will work and I know it's not interesting to a lot of gamers but it, it, it the, if you're using your entertainment or your console is your entertainment device and you're able to switch it on the fly and it's your entertainment hub it's very handy uh, again it'll just it'll be something that comes along the pipeline with updates and well, stuff well I mean like I'll never but it'll use, make more sense I'll never use the smart glass technology to as a, as a remote okay but I'll use it to use content. it seemed like I had a lot of options well that's what I mean like if there's stuff in game that's the stuff I'm going to be interested in. I'm not going to be interested in navigating. I don't know how much game-wise it's going to be incorporated. It seemed oh more of a multimedia thing. Uh, and I know we'll games see. are media, but it seemed more of a... Because what Microsoft is really stressing the Xbox as a uh, a media hub. Yeah. Uh, TV, uh, music, um, And this movies. is something that I'm kind of getting a little... Like, but, that's, but they've been stressing. They started last year, even before. That's yeah. their whole thing. No, but, because more users are using this these features on their Xbox. I know, and it's crazy to me because, to me, a home console, I can find everything better in something else. Yeah. I guess if you want an all-in-one, cool. Vice versa with PS3. I would never use my PS3 for everything. No. I got better th options. Yeah. I mean, I use it to watch movies because it's my Blu-ray player. Sure. But... I don't use it to like I don't I'm not a Netflix subscriber yeah you know like if I want to watch a show I have my ways sure <laughs> sure but, but I don't Microsoft's mean, I, after that and then the fucking conferences and stuff but the bottom line is they don't have a lot of games coming no uh, certainly not anything 360's almost out to pasture the the smart even the the casual options they've shown and their media options they've shown are stuff for the new generation yeah Put Sne me back. Sneeze has been Put me in, coach! <laughs> no, but uh, it, all this media stuff is stuff that will carry over to the next generation. And that's the path, okay? Yeah. Like Halo 4, but it's, what, the fourth game this year? You know... Or this generation? I don't... I'm trying to stop myself from being too excited about Halo. Because I do enjoy the series. I know. But at the same time, I'm kind of feeling like... 
I've been there and done that. Yeah. How could you not? Well, I mean, all these sequels, even the GTA Five. Like, I mean, they didn't show anything at E3. No. But uh, I'm not really that interested. I don't care. If I, I want to play, Grand Theft Auto anymore. But this is just us. I, I know a lot of people do care. So, yeah. but overall, Mike, what would you? Let's give him grades. Let's give him lettered grades. I'm what would you give Microsoft? Oh fuck, D. You give it a D. I give it a D. I'm gonna be a little. You're gonna be surprised. I'll give it a C minus only because I, their media technology is a good lead in for the future in terms of games. None of them really interest in me, and they've really shut it down. So, but in terms of the whole thing, yeah, C minus. Okay. Let's move on to uh, Sony. Let's do Sony, yeah, because Nintendo is the. Let's leave Nintendo for last. Yeah, bit of a hot. Because topic. it no, but it had the the new console coming right. out. And that's supposed to be the big thing. Um, but let's go to Sony's. Sony. It was a good preface. Very good. It was preface. good. Um. Strong games. Uh, if anything, Sony proved that they are still all about the game. Yeah, and that's and I had heard that pre-show that that's what they were going to be doing, and that's exactly what they did. Um, um, they they started off very strong. Yeah, beyond another a big surprise, but no gameplay. Yeah, I apparently you could test out gameplay on the floor. Very minimal, but uh, I don't know if that game interests me. It may not. Sorry, I'm away from the microphone. Uh, May not, but it'll be heavy, good. Heavy Rain, I still haven't played. It's very good. I, I just, um, I don't know if it's my kind of game, but I want to try it just for the sake of trying. It's worth it. trying. Yeah. I, I, as a gamer, it's a new experience. Uh, it, it touches not, on something new. Like, I know what you're saying. It's it may just not more interest. or less a very interactive movie. Yeah, but you there's there's control. Like, you can play it. Yeah. You can play it a lot. Okay. I, and the... It's a story, and it's a decent story. Now, I think that's why I want to play Plot holes and shit, but fuck that. It, it's a good story. Oh, fuck plot holes, eh? Hmm. No, but minimal. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're small ones, though. Like, it seems like in... Uh, I don't even want to get in, but not, the story... That, that was an in-joke, and we're not going to go Yeah, with. it's a self-contained <laughs> one game that... that they, uh, you think it's going one way, and then they just f- completely forget about that stream. Okay. And then it just carries on on its own. That's about all I said. But the game's strong. Um, I think, and this is generally accepted, they didn't cover enough Vita stuff at the Cover present. enough. They barely touched on it at all. Yeah. Which is a, a joke because Vita's on life support. Yeah. And they got no games coming out, no big releases. They just had a little spike in Japan courtesy oh, yeah, of Persona. They got Persona, but Persona's not going to sell big here. Ah, it's got a cult no, following. No, well, not sell big It's not going to sell like it did. It has a cult Japan. following. Yeah. That's it, but it's not going to sell systems. It was, it was a Japanese thing. Yeah. Though. And it's on life support, and. Yet they still support the PSP. Don't get me wrong. I like my PSP. I still own it. The day one. But in terms of a business aspect, why would you still? Why the fuck are you supporting two different platforms? There's games today, new IPs. I might mind you. These are not renditions of Vita games or something that came along. These are PSP only games that are still coming out. Big games in Japan. RPGs and shit. Yeah. Why? How does that make any sense? Why How does that make any sense? It's it, stupid. At this like, point in development, they could have easily just switched it over I to look, Vita, no? I've got 15,000 air miles, okay? Mm. I can get a Vita for 3,000 air miles. I didn't get it. I don't want it. What am I getting it for? Uncharted? I, I don't want to play Uncharted on my Vita. No. They they don't get it. The they games, still don't get the it. The games that I want to play on Vita aren't out yet. No, but they don't get it. The games that now... PlayStation um, All Stars Battle Royale is that's an announcement. It's on the Vita. Why is it on the Vita? It's a game that does not suit it. It's a four characters game. on screen yep. does not fit a small screen. No. They don't understand what should be a PlayStation Three only game and what should be a Vita. Well, they want to make everything on both. now. That's right, but it, like Sound Shapes is coming out on both now. I can understand Sound Shapes because it's more of a. It can translate to the smaller screen. I'm actually glad that it's coming out for both now because games now can I can be play both. it. Some games can be both. But they need to understand what should be one and what should be other. Because Vita, from the very beginning, a lot of people had the thing is, is it not just a mini version of PlayStation 3? If, if it is, why don't I just play the PlayStation 3? Mm-hmm. Vita doesn't get it. The people at PlayStation don't get it. And I don't understand because they get paid a lot of money to know these things. And if they just hired me... I, this is no bullshit. This is no bullshit. Like, I don't get what they're doing. Their business plan for the Vita is not right. From the very beginning, from marketing to what they were showing the public, people didn't grasp it. Yet it had so many things going for it. But 
They left it out of the conference. In hindsight, they've said it was a mistake. They've admitted it. But what does that mean? Hmm. It obviously wasn't important enough to show in their, their press conference. Yet they spent 15 to 20 minutes on Wonderbook. Which is, okay, I get it. They could have spent five to seven minutes on it. I'll even give you the devil's advocate. It's an important thing for PlayStation, but it is not a time to show it at a press conference well, for it, gamers it, where it, gamers are attending. It didn't help that they did, had a shitty... Uh, but the whole press conference was on a roll up until that point. Well, and then it just went completely in the tubes. It didn't help that the people they had demonstrating it were having a hard time. Oh, about. it didn't even work. Yeah, so, I mean, again... A cool concept, yeah. But they wasted way too much. Well, time. it killed the it killed the momentum of what a, a conference is important. Yeah, momentum has to go. There's pacing, just like a movie. Yeah, there's pacing to it. Yeah, keep the excitement level. These things are for the fans. I don't give a shit what people think, or these other media people. Press conferences are for the fans. The access to them has only grown. People are more and more streaming them. Well, there's people like us. Like us. We took the day off. Taking days off work. You yeah. know, to, you know, calling in sick yeah. and not getting paid to sit at home and watch yeah. press conferences. Wonder Book was brutal. <laughs> but they, they closed it out with, uh, with The Last of Us. Yes. Was Tomb Raider in the PS3 conference? I can't remember where that showed up. Because Tomb Raider looks very good. Tomb Raider looks great. And... Was it, or it might have been the Xbox conference, was it? Because we forgot to say, Resident Evil 6 was in the uh, press conference yeah, for the, uh, Microsoft. For both, and I think, uh, I do think you're right that Tomb Raider was also in their press conference. Third party saved mm. the Xbox conference from being a total disaster. It does. Most of their games were th third party, yeah. and that's the thing. Yeah. But um, still, games were shown. But actually, since we've touched on Tomb Raider a little bit, you've obviously heard a little bit about some of the controversy that people yeah, have. Yeah, completely. What, what do you think about all that? Uh, it pisses me off. Uh, I, I read an article on uh, bought from IGN again that um, I think it was Keza that wrote it. But the the guy, one of the high business guys, basically said sexual uh, assault and harassment is not a theme of the game. Yeah. Okay. How you shown it in every trailer that the guy grabs her ass and he's slobbering all over? It's not a big deal. Like sexual assault, people could deal with it. This is a mature game. Yeah. But don't sit there and tell me. That it's not a part of the fucking game. It's there in every trailer. Yeah. It makes sense, actually. I so just own it. So, no, but Donovan, I'll let you go. I think they've sack. blown this out of proportion. Who? Like, well, I mean, like, I agree with what you just said. Um, but it's only a story because the guy from, um, Chris, is it Crystal Dynamics? Crystal Dynamics, yeah. Came out and said that it's not a part of the game. What was just that? Just own it. Yeah. Own it. So many people, this is what I hate about today's fucking society. No one wants to own up to what they do. Speak your mind. Be who you are. Don't be a coward. Yep. That's a coward statement. Yeah. You make a lot of money, just go, you know what? They, this, could have, they could have easily said that this was a theme by wording it differently. No, this is something that makes Laura who she is. This is a, this is an experience that shapes her person. In, term, in terms of becoming the Laura Croft we knew before. It, this doesn't need to be a controversial that's, issue. But it, sh it wouldn't have been. People were fine with it. Yep. People were like, Until wow, that's a bit shocking. The wrong way. But, but they're like, that's a bit shocking. But, wow. But then the guy's like, oh, no, it's not even a thing. But it is a fucking thing. Like, dude, what are you talking about? And that's where the controversy comes from. Just shut up. Let the, let the game and the footage speak for itself. Honestly, though... I mean, we're not dumb. We know enough about marketing to know that this could easily have been just a publicity stunt. But it's a part of the game. Yeah. So. But it is. I mean, Laura's well, supposed to be more realistic. She She's an attractive woman. She's based on a real woman. Yeah. What is wrong with that, though? Yeah. Like, just own it. My pro I hate when people do that. Don't backstep. Let your vision speak for yourself, for it, and... You know what? If you got to backtrack after the fact, then do it. Yeah. But it is what it is. You're not going to stop development on the game. Yeah, that's a theme. No, I'm I'm really excited for this game. Looks great. Um, won a lot of awards too. Yeah, I I I sort of not not I don't want to say I turned a blind eye, but like I read some of this stuff and I'm just like, come on, really? What? Like my attitude is sort of like. People blow things out of proportion all the time. Well, media. And I mean, yeah. like, it's just, it gets ridiculous. Like, people need to take a step back and just be like, whoa, okay. Yeah, but we live in a 
seven, 24 hour problem. seven day news cycle this is it, whether it's whether it's uh, global news whether it's gaming news how contained it is and but one comment on an internet forum can light the internet on fire it's the way it is dude like that's just it's, the way it is it's kind of sad that's the way life is though yeah. you have to be self aware of who you are your impact of your statements that's the way life business relationships are well and yeah, I don't know if we should necessarily get into this, but I mean, look at the psychological implications of Mass Effect Three. Uh, we can't. Talk I'm not going to get into that, but can't I mean, do like, it right now. It'll come up another time, but it, like, it'll take games, over this games, entire thing. Games have a psychological effect on they us. They do, now. and that's what bothers me. I mean, like, I hate people to say there's so many more important things to do. Y- yes, there are, but you know what? We're not doing that right now. We're talking about video games. Yep, and. It, within the video game construct, and I mean, this is a worthy argument. I still read, and I still do other things too. Yeah. But my main source of entertainment at this point in my life is video games, and they've become so interactive, and they've become so like the stories are so big, and I, it, you don't need to go to a movie to get great entertainment no. anymore. And in fact, I think a lot of people would agree that most movies this day don't meet the standards of movies of yesterday. No, they don't. But so it's about booms and bangs. Everything than looks editing and great. Pacing. But I mean, I watched the old uh, Total Recall last night, and we had a hoot watch. Yeah, it's it. a good movie. Yeah, funny, whatever. It's cheesy, and I yeah. mean, but it's funny looking at the violence of a movie from back then, and how graphic it is. Oh, it's gratuitous. Yeah. And yet, you know, we see stuff in games now that is worse than the things we see in movies now. Sure, but I mean, people are also. I guess one of the themes coming out. Let's get back on topic with E three. There was a lot of games with guns and and ver- a lot of violent games. A lot of people said that, which also leads well, into our Lodo. original point. Yeah, he said that, which leads into back into our Sony topic. The Last of Us is a very violent game, it and that's how Sony closed out their their uh, their thing. Game looked impressive, looks and seems to play impressive. Mm-hmm. I still don't know. What the premise of the game is like? Is well, it? Zo- I know it's apocalyptic, they, but is there zombies? They haven't shown a lot. No, they haven't. They've really been keeping Jeez, and, and that. That could be very cool, yeah. but I'm gonna be disappointed. If there's no sort of like zombies or anything. Well, we've like got that. those those mutants or whatever, but they haven't been showing them. They much. look like just people. I, I mean, people the rest of the stuff's hearsay. The people have been infected with something or other. Oh, I don't know. That's uh, that's just a I don't know. theory, but I mean, like, but the the. Even Kojima theory. said, um, "The Last of Us, the the technology used, he was blown away. The punches, the way they looked, the the smashing of the head into the the cupboard. It's a game we knew about, but the demo was very, very impressive. And it, you're right, it's very graphic. Graphic. And well, but that's the goal of the game. I, it may be a little violent for some people, and that's a theme that carried well, through E3. He smashes Buddy into the table. Fucking shit, everywhere. Yeah, I mean." I didn't actually notice that at first because it's kind of dark. Oh yeah. I, but the second time, I was like, "Whoa!" Well, just look with the way the, the the demo ends. Him wrestling the shotgun away. No, no, boom! Blows the shotgun like his head clean off. Yeah. And then the Last of Us. Yeah. It's cool. Well, and then you know, like the God of War uh, with the and that the brain. I can't believe there and that goes to show like a lot of people think God of War was slept on. I know you don't love God of War, but it looked him good. It, it looked good to me. It looks a lot better than three. Yeah, a I lot know. better. I don't know. I it think, looked better, but I don't know. I better. think three looks good. Maybe I haven't seen enough of the game yeah, man, yet. Crazy. To be able to say, War three looks pretty good. I, playing the intro, I was like, "This is gritty, grainy." Uh-huh. Like I expected it to be smooth and sharp, and I just thought, "What?" I think you're crazy. But anyway, um, God of War Ascension is impressive. Uh, I have to see more though. Like. The demo to me, it did a lot of new gameplay elements were the most impressive part of it. Well, the being able the to time pick up shifting, any weapon. pausing, no, but that, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. But pausing enemies in air, it seemed like you could spend time and like a single, the, the game Singularity, I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah, yeah. It's a first person thing. I haven't thing. played it, but I know it. Yeah, you can yeah. zoom and whatever, but it seems you can use that aspect in it. Very cool gameplay elements are mm. much needed, I should say, for mm. God of War. But uh, after watching the God of War 3 demo, and how that previewed um, in terms of seeing Titans. Well, this, this didn't touch that. No, but in that that demo, I saw Titans and gods and heads getting ripped off. This one, I, I fought an elephant man and ripped his brain out. So it was a little slightly, it was slightly less impressive to me. Yeah. But it would be a game, no doubt, that'll be a huge seller. And a lot of people are sleeping on it and they shouldn't. Well, I mean, 
it's 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 got its crowd. It's yeah, it going does. to sell, and it's a big crowd. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like it's God. People love God of War. Yeah, I just think like Kratos himself is not a very appealing character to me. Sure, the game to you. The game is still cool, but yeah. I have said on more than one occasion I've I basically been playing these games to say yes I've played real, real War. quick let's touch on uh, PlayStation Battle All-Stars Royale what do you think they announced the two new characters but well you don't know it's, it's, it's neither here nor there as far as how many characters or what characters and you know there's going to be a shitload of them I think it's going to be a fun party game okay um, it's not something that I'm like I'm going to go rush out and buy. Okay. But it was it would be definitely something I would include on a game night if I had people okay. over. Okay. Yeah, so that's the that's the appeal. I'm not impressed with the gameplay in I terms don't of, think it's something that I would play you by gotta myself. You got to get a super to do anything. Like they need to change this where like in terms of Super Smash Brothers where if you're punching the guy, that has an effect. You know, in in in, in uh, PlayStation All-Stars, that doesn't do anything. All it serves is to build your meter. Right. The whole goal of the game is to do supers, level one, two, or three. Right. That's it. Yeah. Period. End of story. I, I don't like that. It's not... Not beating. enough. It's not enough. Yeah. Because if I'm beating on guys, I want to see progress. I want to see things. But I don't know where they're going to take it, but the promise of new characters and crossover appeal is very prevalent. You could see things like Lightning from Final Fantasy XIII. I think we're going to get a, um, like a ton yeah, of characters. Yeah. Raiden from Metal Gear Solid Three because... Rising. Metal Gear Solid Rising uh, Revengeance was yep. shown. Easily. We'll get to the Konami. I'd like to do that I'm last. I'm going to save Konami for last. That's our fan favorite. Yeah, we definitely. Bear, I know a lot of people don't don't have what we have invested in Konami, but... I don't know. I, take it. Yeah, we'll, it we'll Konami's it. awesome. But Okay, great for Sony. They ended on Last of Us. Great. Um, I'm going to give them a C+. Plus. Wow, not very good. No, I'm going to give them a B. Not, and I'll tell them I'll tell I'll you why. I'll tell you why. Because they showed a lot of games... But they they didn't have what I consider to be a solid press conference. You know, like, it was like the we, games were there. Yeah, but you know, like missing Vita, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, and and then, it is even and, though and, and you're taking the right stance because even though you don't you're not hugely invested in the Vita, nor do you ultimately care. You recognize that it's important. Yeah. To and, Sony and 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 also the the Wonder Books thing could have been handled better. Yeah, it was awful, but. I on the back of the games that were shown in terms of a uh, the the second biggest surprise that was the only move thing they showed wasn't it? Uh no sports cha- oh no but they didn't show sports champions too I think that's something else in there doesn't matter but on the back of the second biggest surprise of the show which is beyond hmm. um a game that looked excellent the oh, we didn't really touch on it enough it, I think it's gonna be really good I hope so. I, it has I, a supernatural element to it. I want it to surprise me because I want it to be more than just a sequel to Heavy Rain. It is not. It has nothing to do with Heavy Rain. I know it has nothing to do with it. You'd I mean, like it to be a completely different game. That's yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I hope it, it is too. Yeah. I, I hope it's much more game-like. I hope they don't just like mimic the control elements yeah, yeah. From, from Heavy Rain um, and that kind of thing. So. Even though we knew about a lot of the stuff that Sony shows, it's still they're very, very strong it was games. A, it was a good they good. showed that games are their main um, focus for what they are. And as a gamer... I have to respect that, and and then that's it. Could have been better. I would have liked to have seen a bit more. Yeah, but uh, who am I to say a uh, B? It's a it's a C plus, almost a B minus. Okay, cool. Let's move to Nintendo real quick. Who yep. should have had the best conference shown, but they didn't. They had a new console to show, the Wii U. Uh, we didn't get a release date. We didn't get a price. We didn't get specs, and they showed a lot of um, games that are either already out. Or will be coming out for other systems. There were no big announcements, except for Pikmin, which was only for select crowd, really. I yep. mean... No, but uh, Pikmin is what it is. A yep. lot of people like and, it. And I think it looked cool. Yeah, okay. But it, it is, but no multiplayer. Does it need multiplayer? It should. I, and Nintendo still, they've announced that they've, they're still using the friend code thing. No official, like, multiplayer. They just well, don't get it. I think... The, no, I'm pretty sure they said that the friend code is changing. Like it's going to be different, and apparently you can have. Fire like, still use them on these about you can have like a lot twelve accounts on your Wii U. Cool. So. Um. No specs. No price. Well, no release date. And they've, you know, when when you, they've been questioned about specs, they dance around it. They're very vague. And they say, well, you know, we've never been about specs. I can remember them being about specs back in Super yep. Nintendo. Super era. Nintendo was more powerful than Genesis. Yeah, and N64, they, even though it was a cartridge-based system, was meant to compete with the PlayStation. Yeah, period, and it was in yep. many ways, gra- graphically, 
Uh, GameCube was a strong system for the air. Yeah. But, yeah, they've... Now, because they have one casual success, they're not about that stuff. Yeah, they're about fun. And, and you know what? If they want to be the game system for the younger gamer, then I guess that's the way it's got to be. Problem is, Donovan, and I'm going to make a bet. I, I, I firmly believe this. I really do. And I think I've said it before on Grizzled Veterans, maybe three or the pre-one. Nintendo's banking on taking this casual audience with them. Yeah. They are. Well, they think, and I think... They think they're coming. They think that everybody that bought the Wii... Bought the Wii is is buying the Wii U. But it's not happening. Grandma and Mama don't need the Wii U. They don't care about graphics. They don't care about more power. Yeah. They care about... You know what? This could be the very well... The only and first system that they ever bought. They don't care. They don't keep up on the the news. The Wii U... They've got Wii Fit and they're happy. The Wii Fit, the Mario for the kids... It doesn't matter. Nope. Like, that's what they got. This whole shit with the moving. Here's no my- one wants a fucking laptop for a controller, yeah. a tablet. No one wants it. It's not its own. Like, it does not have its own processor. That's another thing I want to talk about, the controller. What the fuck is it? Like, what is that? It's a controller. It's, yeah, but it's, it's a, a screen yeah. with not its own processor. It's just a controller. And it streams the yeah. content from the system. I mean... Am I missing it's something? It's not supposed to be more no, than No, but Donovan, controller. am I missing something? Because I feel lost because it doesn't do anything for me. I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. I know, but on that, I'll let you take over in just a sec. They well, did announce that, that controller that looked just like the, uh, the 360 pad. Well, they have a pro That's right. controller. That you'll have to buy separate, mind you. But my thing is, and I saw this, was like, there's going to be some games out there that are going to require you to have four controllers just to play a single player game. Well, I and that by the controller, Wii U only takes two of those tablets. By, by controller, I mean uh, you know we're talking uh, the nunchuck. Yeah, we're talking the Wii, the normal Wii yeah. controller. We're talking the new Wii controller, tablet, um, and the new Pro controller. Then you've got the Pro controller. Then you've got the Wii Fit it's board. Too much. Like what, I mean, what, what the confusion? The fuck? Yeah, but okay. If we're talking about the casual audience coming with us, if I'm Nintendo, they don't get that. They're lost. They're lost at the first controller. They don't even know what a fucking nunchuck is. They're like, I want the the moat, the the Wii moat. That's yep. what they call it. Yep. Give me two of those. Away we go. And for for gamers, other than the core Nintendo crowd that is loyal through and through, which I respect, I do, because they just love Nintendo. Well, I mean, at this point, what do you buy a Nintendo system for? I don't know. Mostly first person. I don't first, fucking know. You buy it for first person games. Not first person. First, first party. First party games. Yeah. Um, because that's it's really so Mario. Like, come on! Like, how old is Mario? How? how yeah. I, come I, on! I'm kind of bored with Mario. It's boring. Like, new shit. Come on! Like, where is Nintendo going with games? Showing Arkham City, a game that came out last year. Uh, how many other the Assassin's Creed Three they're talking about? Well, here's here's another thing I heard that might be interesting. The Wii U could be powerful enough to have slightly better versions of stuff that comes out on uh, all three No, I've heard that, but I've also heard that it's on par, and some of the versions suffer. There's nothing definite. And that this should have been Nintendo's press conference, or E3, to win. They should have killed it. They should have killed it, but they didn't. They, If anything, it makes them... They dropped the ball so completely and so vastly, and now we have a hindsight, though. They did have a press conference after where they announced a new well, 3DS had, model. They had their Sunday thing that they did, where yeah. they did sort of more about the controller itself for the Wii U. Yeah. And that's kind of cool, but I mean, they spent. Well, I gotta say this much: their press conference. I've never seen a group of professional like executives who apparently don't know how to read. Why they just Did misplaced? You, you, I didn't watch. I skimmed it. They I didn't talked like this, and Reggie had no personality. You hate Reggie. I, th- I think he's slimy. Yeah, I, honestly, I think he's slimy. Uh, I, 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 a lot of people seem to think he's cool, but I don't think he's cool. I, I find, but you know, what? anytime he's interviewed, I like to get in this business someday. So uh, Reggie is what he is, but he doesn't. I don't even, think he comes across the best on on. Uh, I don't even. On press he doesn't conference. even come across as a gamer to me. No, he does not to me at all, and that's one thing I won't. Make. He does not come across to a gamer to me, as a gamer to yeah. me. Uh, I don't. I don't really have too much to say about Nintendo other than they just. They just dropped the bomb. The Wii U, to me, I gave it a chance. I really did. I wasn't closed-minded, and they just dropped the ball in every possible way. I'm still Hashtag a little curious, fail. but I mean, Nintendo Land? 
Fuck, yeah, it's not for us, though. I mean, <laughs> I, it, it really isn't. I it's think, not for us. I can live with it, but a lot of the shit seems not for me. The, the sad truth is, I think we've grown out of Nintendo. Yeah, and I I think Nintendo Wii, the Wii U is going to have a rude awakening when it comes to what people are going to buy their system. They really think that the casuals are coming. I will bet money. I still think it'll sell out when it comes out. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, the Wii did. Yeah, but the Wii was different. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, Nintendo's pre- uh What do you give it a grade? I'm going to give it... Oh, this is actually hard. It is, because it's based on expectations of yeah. what they should have been. Um, I w- see, here's the thing. I, I, I had huge expectations out of them. Um, I'll give them a C plus Because, honestly, none of the press confer- conferences were that great. I don't think any of the press conferences deserve I'll give an Nintendo a. a D. Yeah? It might even D minus. Just because of what they should have had and what they didn't have are bad. I don't understand how you were releasing a system at the end of the year, probably November. You don't have a price. You don't have specs. You don't have release bundles in place. This is the time to announce it. This is the biggest game conference in the world. Yep. Period. Where everyone's watching and you can't even give it these details. I found that a lot of the Japanese developers seem to be snubbing E3 a little bit this year. In favor of other game conferences. Maybe. We'll see. I I don't know. They, They seem to have a voice last year. I think. Mm. Well, yeah, but th- again, like I said, this year's E3 seemed to be the most disappointing to me personally. Yeah. Um, on that note, let's let's move to uh, let's our, talk about a positive, a, a highlight of for E3. For us, for uh, us, some people may not be invested in it as much as we are, but you should be because uh, Konami <laughs> makes some fantastic games, and it looks like they're going to have a great 2013. And, it and, will, and a, and a great closing to 2012. Uh, I, I let's talk about before we get into uh, what we want to talk about. Let's talk about uh, Metal Gear Rising uh, Revengeance. Okay, I like. Uh, you know what? It looked good. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gameplay of it seemed fluid. It seems exciting. It seems progressive in terms of what the moves you'll learn. Yep. It's not Metal Gear Solid. No, and it's not. Fine. And they've differentiated yep. that enough. I'll buy that day one. Cool. Uh, Platinum Games, I trust. Me too. I know. I I have hated on this game for a lot of different reasons and been um, pessimistic but I want to be optimistic about it mm. because I, I trust the license and I trust the developer but yeah. it just didn't seem like it was working but I don't know I'll play it and, and it looks like a hell of a lot of fun it does look like a hell of a lot of fun um, you know they've definitely got elements in there from that make it a Metal Gear game but it's not Metal Gear Solid. No. It's Metal Gear Rising. Yeah. And I can accept that. Yeah. And again, Platinum Games. Oh, yeah. Thumbs up across the board. They haven't made a bad game to me. That's no. Yeah. Uh, on another note, I'd like to touch on this real quick. Um, Okami. Uh, HD. Just now for HD. Um, if you don't know, Platinum Games is basically what Clover Studios was. Clover Studios made uh, Okami. One of the best games of all time. Honestly, it's a Zelda game through and through in terms of the progression, um, the world. It's a game you, you owe it to yourself to play. It's gorgeous. It has everything that makes... What made me fall in love with video games is incorporated in this game. Cool. I actually have it for my PS2, and I'll embarrassingly admit that I haven't played it yet. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but I have every intention of, of getting it. It honestly is that good. Yeah. Uh, the I gameplay will- elements, the progression... It makes you want to play the game. Yeah, I, I the pacing fully, of it is fantastic. I expect that you're going to download it. I will, but I'm also gonna. I, I'm. You know what? You download it from me because I'm gonna pay. Full okay. Price. I want to pay full price. For like it. I, yeah, I bought the PS2 one day one yeah. and I uh, played it. I want to support this game because I've yeah. had a copy that I got, it. that I got used. Um, this game has been released three times and it has never actually done exceptionally well sales wise. So yeah, I want to support this game. Well, twice home consoles this will be the second third was on the um, DS Okami oh, that was a, yeah but that was a sequel was it not pseudo Okami or prequel didn't. whatever yeah but so three releases period um well this will um, be the third release of this game no second no you had the PlayStation version and then you Play- had the PS2. Wii version it never came out for the Wii yeah it did Okami came out for the Wii With the, you could paint yeah. Oh, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. I may be wrong, but I don't think so. 
I think it was like people were like, oh well, this game was made to be played on the Wii. Uh, yeah, you lost me. I really, I never even heard that. And then uh, now, this uh, but is and, and he was also Amaterasu, the the she, the wolf, is featured prominently in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Three. Yes, which is great. I mean, he didn't forget the license, yeah. uh, Capcom or, or whatever. So I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward. To you support Okami. It's a great game. But anyway, uh, Metal Gear Rising, day one purchase for me. I was I was impressed with what I saw. Uh, I like. It's 2013 now, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say. So let's move on uh, to what we really love, in from Konami. We're gonna sh- give some extra love to Castlevania at this point. Yeah. Um, we've we've, we've talked about we've this talked before. briefly about Lords of Shadow before, and we knew about Lords of Shadow too. And are pre- kind of. Did we see the 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 trailer before? No, it was. Or is this? We, I, we I didn't think that the trailer before. was released with their their pre E three show. Okay. Right. So, the trailer's awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't wait to play this game. I, I, I can't wait to see Still it. think it's it's one of the best action games of all time. Uh, and it, it's, it shows, for me personally, I know it was your 2010 game of, of the year. Well, again, not just gameplay-wise, but like the story is so good. It is good. so good. And it's a fleshed out, it's a full action game that you don't see anymore. A lot of people skimp on these games. They're like six, seven hours long. Yeah. This is a 15-hour experience, 14-hour experience. As far experience. as I, would, I thought it was 25. Maybe your first time, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It uh, could be close to a twenty-hour game. Yeah, and it's it's I, all I, good. I remember going through and going, wow, what? I remember it's me too going? because I was like, wow, there's so much to this game, <laughs> and I was like, I was, I, I never thought it was too long. No, I, I I thought it was right on point. I was, I was very well or, or very happy to see that there was more. Well, because you know. You, the environments are constantly changing. Oh, fucking awesome. Dude. New enemies. I mean, fuck, it's so good, dude. Uh, like that game. I, honestly, I don't know what to say. If you don't like the game, you just come fine. from a that, different. No, but you just come taste. from a different era as me. Yeah, that's perfect. Because taste. the game, it it has every element of what Castle made, or what made Castlevania great in the 2D from Nintendo to Super Nintendo, and the DS versions and the um, what was before the DS. The Game, Game, Game Boy, Boy Advance. Advance. Yeah. Game Boy Advance. Because the Game Boy Advance had some great Castlevania games. Uh, and I've seen... Like, Harmony well, of Dis- Dissonance and uh, all these things. Well, um, Game Trailers did a really excellent retrospective on the Castlevania okay. series right before Lords of Shadow came out. Yeah. And uh, anybody that's uh, interested in a little bit of history on Castlevania... It's, a, it's something it you should know. Yeah. It, Castlevania is just as important as Mario, as Zelda. Mega Man. These are pillars oh. of, of gaming culture. These are the these are the franchises that have... Built. Give us an, a foundation for what we have right. today. And I said it before, God of War owes a lot to Castlevania. Absolutely. So, and I am a biggest so get, God of War I fan. I get really frustrated. Action games, period. Yeah. Period. End of story. Full yeah. stop. Yeah. Oh, a lot of things to what Castlevania is. Whether you're a side scroller, but all side scrollers evolved into 3D games. Yeah. So, game looks. Uh, we only saw a CG trailer. Yeah. Now I can't wait, and I even tweeted to David Cox about this. I really can't wait for a gameplay trailer of this. Yeah. Game. And I, I'm dying. But the to teasers. Find out- what do we see? Alucard. <sighs> Alucard, who is Dracula's son, uh, which which Obviously. is widely renowned as uh, as the best game. He comes from the best game of Castlevania game, Symphony of the Night, for PlayStation One. If you haven't played it, you're crazy. Yeah, it's the it's a phenomenal game. That and top ten of all time. Super Castlevania Four. Those would probably be all my- great games. Yeah, yeah. but S- Symphony of the Night is the pinnacle to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, it is, and it's easy. It's 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 a popular thing to say it, but it's that good. Yeah. The, but Castlevania has also always been known for the music. The soundtracks have always been phenomenal. Yeah. The uh, soundtrack for Lords of Shadow. Lords of Shadow is incredible. I, I will admit... And it's I, Castlevania through and through, though. The I, organ. I had hoped there had been a few more, you know... Touches to the old? Old themes that would come back, but... Yeah, they my, did in some ways the... Um, the musical Baba box. Yaga. Yeah, uh, yeah. The thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, big up my uh, one... The walkthrough for the forgotten one. Oh right! At the end of it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I used the Baba Yaga music, but I forget what that comes from. Uh, well, it's when it's you a Castlevania with... theme. It's an old one. It's uh... ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Do 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 do. Let's add it in at the end of this. I'll, I'll be putting. It yes, in. Donovan. It does all the work for the podcast. By the way, I just talk. 
He will add it in at the end for you, and you can listen to it and yeah, get a boner. I do. <laughs> I do all the work and buy the beer. Yeah, I know. Uh, Today you did, yeah. <laughs> but I'm. I couldn't stress fact. But let's move off Lords of Shadow too. Unless do you have anything else to well, say about it? Well, um, just the fact that you know we we mentioned Mirror of Fate. Uh, oh, well, that's what I wanted to get to. It's a slight disappointment to me because you want the it, fact that it's self-contained on the 3DS hurts me. You I don't it, want to get. You want it to be a downloadable game. I do uh, that, or um, and bring it to the Vita, yeah. or or some, or and then eventually bring it to the uh, the PSN or and the Xbox Live Arcade. It's it's something. I love Lords of Shadow. I, I will, and it's it seems like it's supposed to be a storyline uh, important game, and I want to play it for Sorry. those reasons too. And I almost want to say, you want to split on a 3DS? And <laughs> I, know. I honestly want to buy a 3DS just to play this game. And that's the first game for that system that I've said that for. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I would play... Uh, like, I don't know, and I, I, I tweet David Cox, too. I just don't... I'm disappointed. I don't want it to be too important to the story that I'm going to miss things. It reminds me of Kingdom Hearts. Mm. Kingdom Hearts is uh, the, the two games for the consoles, but then um, all those portable versions muck up the story, and it feels like you have to play them. I, I'm never going to play them. Yeah. Neither the majority of the people. Either that or give us a synopsis when we get Lords in of Shadow the, the sequel. Yeah. This is what happened, blah, blah, blah. Previously on Lords of Shadow. It, it's too early to tell. <laughs> yeah. uh, it may be a side story. It may be very important. Who knows? But I'm just happy we're getting a sequel because yeah. I love the game. Yeah. Love the game. I think... What else do we have to talk about? I, you know what? We got lots to talk about, we got but I don't think it's going to fit in the construct yeah, of this. I think today we've, we've covered E3. I hope everybody's been satisfied that uh, we brought some valid points to the table. If... Some of them might have been recycled, yes, maybe, but uh, I, I, we definitely... Fuck that. This is the only podcast you should listen yeah. to. <laughs> Period. Full stop. End of story. Oh, big ups. Uh, Evolution uh, 2012 coming up next year. Next uh, next weekend, sorry. Today is the 29th of June. But uh, the Evo tournament is the biggest. We're huge fighting game fans. I want to give this uh, a little bit of a moment. It just popped in my head. Well, yeah, I mean... Uh, fighting games are a huge part of who I am, personally. Uh, the competition aspect, the love of video games, period. And nowhere is this better on display than at the Evo tournament, which is held in Las Vegas. And this year I'm going to go. That's awesome, so, I mean... I'm so jealous. It's at Caesar's <laughs> Palace. Um, I'm fortunate enough and um, brash enough, I should say, to interject myself and some of the guys that are going from IGN. And uh, whether they want me there or not, I'm fucking going. I need you to say hello for, to Destin from me. I will. Uh, <laughs> tell, I will. Tell him you're, you're a big fan. I've never met Destin. Yeah. I've met Mark, uh, who I'm, I am going to go and, yeah. and visit briefly, mind you. Uh, but it's a huge opportunity I, I, for me personally. I'm going to try and do the m most I can yeah. without being annoying. Obviously. And also have a hell of a lot of fun. I've always wanted to go. I'm sure you're going to meet some people I'm going to be pretty jealous of. I'm going to do some interviews too. I'm going to bring my uh, my video camera. Yep. I'm going to talk to guys. I'm going to try and talk to Justin Wong, Daigo, uh, Mago, Alex Valle, uh, Mike Ross. Uh, Seth, hopefully he's there. I think he's going to be there, Why even though he stepped he down from Capcom. Would he not still... One of the best commentators to me. That's I, what I mean. Like, would he not commentate? Uh, I hope so. If he doesn't, I'll be really upset. Uh, this is something I would thought they would have already had arranged. I'll try to use my limited Korean and try to get Pumko. Ah, there you go. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, very much. And it could be a big break. It could be nothing for me. We'll if see. I, if I see you on a stream, I'm going <laughs> to... That'll be really fucking cool. <laughs> Don't put it past me. Honestly, don't put it past me yeah. because I, I I have no fear with these things. No, I know you don't. And I have a face for built for camera, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we both do. We're both pretty. Anyway, Evolution's next weekend highlights all the best and the top video uh, fighting video games, and so you you will never see more top quality gaming skill than you will see on display. So we got Street Fighter Arcade Edition. We got Super Street Fighter Four. We got arcade Marvel vs. Capcom. Yep. King of Fighters. 13. 13. Uh, Virtua Fighter 5. Virtua Fighter 5. Mortal Kombat's making an appearance. Nine. I believe yep. Soul Calibur 2. I Honestly, some of the older games. Soul games, Calibur 2? 
Shark Number Five. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, some of the older games are coming back. Capcom versus uh, SNK Two will make uh, a smaller show. It probably won't make on stream. Not on the mainstream. But there but is a small tournament. There's always Third Strike there. Um, Blast Blue is there. Continuum Shift, a very slept on 2D game. Guys, uh, if you haven't invested in the fighting game genre, I highly recommend you do. It's one of the most competitive. And it's a very rewarding. Rewarding. The the ceiling for improvement is ever changing. It's you one never. Of, it's can one of the it. few kinds of games that you really have to practice at. That you get this gratification when you accomplish a things. trading room thing and a combo that you're thinking, but there's always someone better. Yeah. And you're trying to reach for that height. The eternal struggle of the fighting. And, game. and you see, we here at. Uh, grizzled veterans, what do we do as soon as we finish make the recording? Well, I brought my arcade stick. We're, yeah. we're going to it. We go so. straight into it. So, listen, guys, Evo next week. Watch it. Um, let's touch on real. What are you playing right now? Um, I'm I'm actually still doing my Renegade run on on Mass Effect. So Three. I'm in Mass Effect Two right now. We'll touch on next Grizzled Veterans with the extended cut endings um, a little bit. I I, I beat uh, Lollipop Chainsaw. Did you like it? It was fun. Okay. It's definitely worth playing through because it's it, it's fun. It's very fun. varying reviews on that game. Yeah, I mean, up and down. Uh, it's 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 for certain tastes. The writing, I I laughed. Smart. Ready, I laughed playing funny. this game. So um, yeah, it's it's an average game. I, I would give it a a six point nine because that's appropriate. Cool. Um, you know, it's TNA, vulgar, rude, violent. It's but beautiful. that's what it is. It's that's beautiful. What you expect. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you know, not the greatest game in the world, but certainly not the worst game. Me, I. Uh, just platinum Final Fantasy 13 too late to the party. Uh, I will be in Dragon's Dogma very soon. Uh, I'm also looking forward to Dark Siders too. That looks great. Great, I, another game you should definitely get. I started Darksiders playing Dark, I started a very playing. Zelda esque game. In I terms downloaded of this it. Progression. And I started playing it. Play it. Yeah, very good. So uh, again, you can reach me at uh, Jason Rose A at Twitter. Yep. And, um, uh, and my IGN is T Canadian. Yep. T E H Canadian. Uh, Donovan, where can they get you? I'm iRobot on both, and that's with a underscore under between the i and robot. Very cool. I'm going to make sure that's all typed out because it's all bullshit with this internet shit anyway. <laughs> Listen, guys, thanks very much for listening. Uh, this I'm going to go get drunk. Yeah, this is Drunken Veterans uh, signing off. Have a great long weekend if you're Canadian. And if, if not, well, you're not good enough. See you next month. Bye. <laughs>